in our area, originally there was a number of pulp mills operating in our area which took all the residuals from sawmills like ours and both of those pulp mills have since been shut down. So when Skeena began, we had nowhere to take the bark and sawdust that our sawmill produces. So we knew we needed to find a home for that. And so we looked at a bunch of alternatives and landed on building a pellet mill as a way to add value to that piece of our fiber. Uh, this plant was built out of uh, a need for uh, sawmills to have a place to discharge their sawmill residuals, the sawdust, the shavings, the bark. Um, it's uh, also as a result of um, really reducing the uh, greenhouse gas emissions that were uh, created from beehive burners at sawmills. We're on uh, Dunkley Lumber's TFL 53. This fall they would be burning these piles to abate their fire hazard and also uh, clear the area for spring plant. To recover the biomass we're utilizing a contractor that has a Peterson grinder. Um, so essentially, you know, with, you know, instead of the piles being burnt, they'll uh, position the grinder at the foot of a pile and feed the biomass into the horizontal grinder and uh, generate a hog type material that will be transported to Meadowbank, our uh, closest pellet plant. So the logging operations which used to uh, take all of the limbs and uh, you know reject logs from their logging operations and burn them in brush piles, they are now separating that material and making sure that it's kept clean so that we can take that material, grind it up and bring it to the uh, wood pellet plant for producing wood pellets. Most of the sawmill residuals are handled by trucks. Uh, different types of trucks pick up the sawmill residuals, which are conveyed out of the sawmill into a silo typically. Then it is loaded into a, um, a large van, like one of these trucks that you see behind me here. The most important thing about wood fiber going into a pellet mill is to keep it clean. What's important is how you handle right from the log delivery to the sawmill, through the sawmill, to keep rocks and dirt contamination out of your pellets. Let me speak a bit to where the wood for making pellets comes from. So, you know, in, in our case it comes from our sawmill. So when a, when a volume of logs goes to our sawmill, approximately 25 to 30 percent of that volume ends up as material that is not lumber and not chips. So, and it's a combination of things. It's bark, that's a significant percentage. It's uh, it's sawdust from sawing the lumber and it's shavings often made when the lumber's finished in the planer mill. So it's, it's a combination of those things and that comes here to the pellet mill to be made into a pellet. And so there's, there's quite a range of mixture that can occur in those things. So we try to keep the product separated before the pellet mill because the, it is important in pellets that you control the raw material so you control the properties of the finished pellet. So what we do with those products that come from our sawmills, we put them in separate piles and then we, we blend them together on a formula before they go into the pellet plant. And that formula blending allows us to control the, the, you know, the characteristics of the pellet which include you know, its heat value, its ash content, its durability, they're a function of that raw material. This is a combination of sawdust from sawing lumber and shavings from our planer mill that'll go into our pellet mill to become a pellet. So this material behind me is primarily bark. It has some white wood in it uh, caused by the debarking process and, and other bits that are picked up in sawmilling, but it's, it's primarily bark and it's an important part of what we put into pellets to turn into renewable energy for our customers. The, the first stage of the process is the, the wood is ground to a consistent size. So you can take a fairly wide range of sizes of piece into the pellet mill. So it's ground to a consistent size. And then the next stage in the process is it's dried. We have to remove the moisture content down to around 12 to 14 percent initially and then it's ground to a powder after that. And then the powder is, is put through a pellet die and squeezed into a pellet. Finally, it cools off because it comes out of the pellet machines hot and, and it's, it's fragile when it's hot, but it's cooled and then it's shipped. At the plant with our quality control program, we do mostly physical testing, which is uh, you know moisture, durability, fines, and some plants do an, like an ash test. 
There's also a chemical test that is done on a minimum of a quarterly basis that we send pellets out to a third party lab and it's testing for all different kinds of chemicals and metals to make sure that we're within the thresholds of those micro metals and components. The shipping of pellets is, is a very important piece of the manufacturing process. In fact, I sometimes think it's more challenging the shipping part than the manufacturing part. In, in our case, we ship our product by rail to ports. Our product is shipped to currently either Vancouver port or Prince Rupert port, depending on the customer, and it's taken in bulk in rail cars. So CN is dedicated to the movement of wood pellets. Uh, we started wood pellets in 2000, moving 38 cars a year, and we're now going to move in 2021 probably over 28,000 cars. We're proud to be moving sustainable product for our customers. We also integrate very closely with the wood pellet uh, shippers to make sure that we're managing the supply chains from origin all the way to port. I'd say the importance of Fibrico to global markets is that we provide a critical gateway between Canadian producers and end-use customers. And if you look at the products that we handle, we're really providing renewable and sustainable Canadian products to markets that otherwise wouldn't have access to them. The Port of Prince Rupert goes back uh, over 100 years and it was originally selected by the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway to be a strategic gateway with trade into, into Asia. And ever since we've been moving cargo both from the region but really went through a transformation back in the early 2000s to be a gateway for trade between continents in the Asia Pacific. Well, I think the Westview Wood Pellet Terminal represents you know, part of the port's growth and diversification strategy. Uh, and it was an important terminal solution that uh, created a, a market access for growing biofuel exports out of Northern BC. After the process of the pellets, they are loaded into rail cars throughout many of our mills located in British Columbia by CN Rail and they deliver to us where we at Westview Terminals unload them and either directly load them onto a vessel or else we put them into storage ready for our next ship to arrive. When the pellets arrive at Westview, they enter our conveyor system and each of our conveyor points has a soft handling or a gentle slope so that we keep the integrity of the pellets. From there, we decide whether we're going to put them into storage or we're going to actually load them onto the vessel. Once we decide that we're going to load them onto the vessel, they then proceed to a large spout that's also got soft handling capabilities so that when we load them in the ship, they don't break apart um, once they're loaded. Westview is comprised of four silos and overall they can hold about 50,000 metric tons of pellets. That's about 500 rail cars. Uh, we load ships of upwards of 60,000 tons. Putting that in perspective, we can unload all of the pellets from silos as well as an extra 100 cars and there you have a ship. Once a ship leaves Westview Terminal, it either makes its way across the Pacific Ocean to Asia or down through the Panama Canal and up towards Europe. <laughs>